Oh, hello everybody and welcome. I think we are live. My Facebook says we are live. If you're here, if you can send me a quick message here in the comments to let me know that you're here and that this is working and then we'll start the show. Hi Lano, how are you? All right, hi everybody, we know it's working. Hi Jessica, hi and welcome from, hello from New York City. Hi Rachel, I am Uncle Julie. My real name is Giulio, and that's an Italian name. My grandfather came from Italy, where there are a lot of Giulios. So, I know we have kids from all over the country, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, California, Virginia, and so I want you to say my name. Say, hi, Giulio. I think I heard you. Great. Now I want you to say it the Italian way. Giulio. Giulio. Say hi. Oh, we have more people joining us. Hi, Marissa. Hi, Teresa. Elena's here and Erin. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. All right. So I have one niece and five nephews. Hi, Joan. Hi, Susie. My niece and five nephews call me a special name that I would like to share with you, Uncle Julie. And you can call me that too. Many of you are home right now, and I am home right now, and this is not a usual or normal time. Some of you are doing school at home. Some of your parents are working from home. And some of you already know that it's a special period in history where the entire world is staying home so that we can make our countries healthier. We're connecting together through our computers from our houses and our apartments during this unique and special time. Now, this is unique and special. Which of the kids online right now knows what the word unique means? If you know what the word unique means, tweet it at me, chat it at me so I can see it. What does the word unique mean? Anybody? Oh, I have to scroll up. Great. There we go. Hey, Christian. Hi, Miranda from Mansfield, Massachusetts. How are you? Hi, John. Unique means, well, uh, <laughs> let's see, how do I make this right for a child? Unique means the only or mm, something that is so special that it doesn't happen a lot. And temporary means that it won't happen all the time. So what we're experiencing right now is unique and temporary. Great. Now, many of you know, and many of your parents know, a man who used to start his show on TV by putting on his sweater. It is hot in here, so I am going to start by taking mine off. Let's see who's here. We've got 32 people. Every single one of you is wonderful. All right, ready? We're going to start our show every day with a deep breath because we're all experiencing lots of things every day now that can be, well, kind of difficult. So a deep breath helps us stay focused. So I want you to do this at home. I'll do it here. Everybody put your hands on your tummy, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. Oh, that feels good. First, I want to say hi to my niece, Melania, and my nephews, Marco, Nico, Jojo, Anthony, and Nikki. Hi, guys. This all started because I wanted to connect with you and because I miss you. Now, you probably think I look different today because I shaved my beard. Two reasons. One, it is now healthier for people to shave their beards because sometimes germs can live in there. And two, because my grandma Margie, who's 95 years old, well, she thinks I look more handsome without it. Now, when we get together in our family, we play this game. It's called 
Uncle Julie's game. So I thought it'd be fun to share it with everybody. Here's how it works. Oh, Lori's here, and Brian Naylor, and Laura Sortwell, and Jordana, hello. Hello to everyone down in Fairhaven, New Jersey, and Ramona, I see Patrick Graham, I see Cynthia, I see Danny and Juliet and Scarlett. I see Josh Littman out in California. Welcome everybody, welcome. So here's how today is gonna work. We'll have 10 questions today. Some of them have A, B, or C answers, meaning that you get to pick the answer out of three options, and some of them don't. Some of them are easy, and some of them are harder. There are even some for the parents if they want to play along too. You'll have 20 seconds to answer each question, and I'll keep track on my phone. You can do one of two things. You can either type your questions into Facebook, hi Molly, or what is this romper room? Look Ramona, I'm doing my best here. I want you to type your answer into Facebook or I want you to write it down on a piece of paper, okay? You can do either one because some of you are sharing a computer and some of you are not gonna be able to get at the laptop or at the keyboard. So you can either type it into Facebook or you can, um, yes, Zoe, I do look different. I took my beard off. Or um, you can write it on a piece of paper. Now you can play as a team or by yourself. You can play with your parents or without them if they gave you permission to be here. I'm not gonna track your answers. We're gonna do this on the honor system. Do we know what honor is? What does that mean? Who knows what the honor system is? Tell me, tell me through our faces here. Who knows what the honor system is? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Rosa says no. <laughs> Hi, Nuri. Hi, Orly. Hello in Brooklyn. Yes, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron said the honor system is telling the truth. That means that we have to show great respect. We respect and we love each other so much that we're going to be honest with our answers when we record them, and we're going to be honest about how many points we got today. Also on the honor system is how you get your answer. So you can't ask Alexa and you can't Google it. You have to know it or talk to your teammates or to your parents. I do want you to keep score though, because we're gonna do this every night. Some nights there will be many of you here. Some nights there will be very few of you here and that's okay, but I will be here every Monday through Friday to make sure during this special time, we have a moment to connect. And so I want you to keep your score and I want you to send me your grand total when this special time is over. And the person with the highest grand total will win a special prize. Now, tonight's our first show and we might go 15 minutes. We might go 20 minutes. That's right, Cynthia, no cheating. We might go 30 minutes. Oh, Charlie Pellegrino, how are you? My cousin Alex, how you doing? And so we might go as long as 20 or 30 minutes. The new skill that we're all going to learn and have to get used to is not knowing. Not knowing how long this will last is going to be a really important thing for us to learn. So we're just going to have to see how it goes. So everybody grab a piece of paper and a pen or your laptop or a place to take notes wherever you want. And while you're getting set up, I want to say hi to my TV and my television and film friends. I cannot wait for all of us to go back to work and for you to be back to work so you can help me light this show and minimize the reflection and master the angles. I miss you and I love you. Many of you are working in the gig economy, which means that things are slow. It's gonna be okay. Now, everybody, got your paper, your laptop? Great. Before we begin, I wanna show you two special things. First, my lizard. My lizard has been on my desk for over 10 years, and he doesn't have a name yet. Can you imagine not having a name? And I want you to help me name him. So if you are five years old or six years old, or even if you're 15, I want you to think of a name for my lizard, 
this is my lizard, and I want you to message me with your ideas, and we'll name him together. Now, his favorite message is, you got this. He keeps this on my desk every day, and so I'm sending it to you. So I know that there are some parents out there who may have had some challenging days today, homeschooling their children, and you kids have had a challenging day today, sort of, you know, getting used to mm, making sure this works at home. So uh, I want you to know that you got this. Secondly, I have my lemonade. I love my lemonade. It's my favorite drink. Why? Because you make it with lemons and sometimes lemons are sour. But when you turn them into lemonade, it tastes sweet. And that's what this show is all about. Taking the things in our life right now that seem a little sour, that seem a little not normal, and making them feel a little bit better. I also have my hand sanitizer. Dear family, stop texting me. I also have my hand sanitizer. I don't need it, I'm home alone. But my mom told me to, and I'm learning to listen to my mother a little bit more. Even when you get old like me, you gotta listen to mom. So, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> let's make some lemonade, people. Question number one. Who else we got here? <gasps> hey, Lizzie. Hi. How is everybody? Oh, Marco said hi. Hi, Marco. Oh, we've got 62 people here right now. Awesome. So, um, every one of you is special, and I'm so glad that you are here. Lizardo da Vinci. Oh, Christian, I love that. Christian and I haven't seen each other since college, and now he's naming my lizard. I love that. So let's do this. Question number one. Question number one is always an ABC question. I'm going to get my tech correct here. Great. Tonight, we're going to do question number one at different age levels. So this one is for everyone. Question one. What is the color of an emerald? Rather easy for some of you, might be tougher for others. What is the color of an emerald? Is it A, blue, B, green, uh, pink, or C, green? Blue, pink, or green? What is the color of an emerald? I see, I see answers coming in. I see answers coming in. We've got 20 seconds on the clock for you kids to write down your answer or put it in your laptop, or put it here on my screen. Welcome, oh look at this. Allison, my cousin, my sister, David. Hey guys, welcome, welcome. C, green is what a lot of people are saying, but are they right? I don't know. Let up, oh, timer's up. C, green. The color of an emerald is green. Now, some of you kids might be saying, oh my God, that was so easy. Well, here's a harder one. If you want the hard one on question one, here's a slightly more difficult one. What is the color of the planet Saturn? What is the color of the planet Saturn? So I'll put 20 seconds on the clock. There we go. Take your best guess. What is the color of the planet Saturn? Is it yellow, brown, green, blue, or purple? I'll give you an extra five seconds because I started the timer late. What is the color of the planet Saturn? Oh my God, that was so easy, Tootsie says. Well, Tootsie, this show is not designed for a 40-year-old woman. All right, orange, yellow, yellowish, brown, red. What's the answer? The answer is, okay, at some point, I'll do this not by myself, but there it is, yellowish, brown. The color of the planet Saturn is A, yellowish, brown. So, in case you're wondering, oh, there we go. For those who want to really much uh, more age appropriate for the younger question for the younger folks question if you're six or younger this is your number one what is the color of the sun so this is especially for my my nephew Nikki what is the color of the sun 
Nikki and his friends. Is this red? Is it yellow? Or is it blue? Nikki, what you got? Let's see. Oh, Caroline said, otherwise known as amber. Yes, this is true. What is the color of the sun? Red, yellow, or blue? I'll give you 10 more seconds. Mari Carlucci says it's yellow, but is she correct? Lauren says it's yellow. Is she correct? Nikki, what do you think? Six-year-olds, what do you think? All right. The color of the sun is yellow. Well done. Now, for some of you, those months should be easy. For most of you, those might be medium. Or for some of you, they're difficult. We're going to see how this all goes. Question number two. Question number two. Are we ready? Yes, Kyle. The big yellow one is the sun. All right. Question number two is how many legs does a spider have? How many legs does a spider have? You have 20 seconds and you have no options. I'm not going to give you A, B, or C. How many legs does a spider have? All right, let's see. Lindy said, bro, like that's, I don't know. Does that mean it's hard? Does that mean it's easy? I don't know. We'll see. All right. Well, Aaron says eight. I need a sh shout out to the ATL. Woo, woo. Hello, Lauren's son, John. Hello in Atlanta. We got a lot of family in Atlanta. Joe Calari says that a spider has six legs. Susie Gilbert says eight. Caroline Crane says she feels so validated. Let's see, a spider has eight legs, eight legs. If you said eight, you are correct. A spider has eight legs. Look at it, that's a very friendly spider. All right. Question number three. Question number three is our history question. Our history question is the following. Who was the second president of the United States of America? Who was the second president of the United States of America? We have 20 seconds on the clock. We are going to advance the slide so you can see. Was it Thomas Jefferson? Was it John Adams? Or was it Barack Obama? Who we got? Who we got? Was it Thomas Jefferson? Was it John Adams? Or was it Barack Obama? We've got a lot of questions or a lot of answers for John Adams. We've got one Thomas Jefferson there. The second president of the United States was John Adams. For those of you who are curious, John Adams was an American lawyer and writer and one of our founding fathers. He was the second president of our country from 1797 to 1801. Great. Now, we're going to move on to our fourth question. Now, our fourth question is our question that you can use your laptop. You can Google, you can ask Alexa, you can ask your friends and family. This question is our research question. So, a female deer is called a doe. What is a male deer called? A female deer is called a doe. What is a male deer called? You can have 40 seconds on this one, okay? 40 seconds. You can Google it. You can ask Alexa. You can turn to your friend. If you're sitting in the same room with Frank Crane, I bet you he knows. Let's see. What is a male deer called? The only comment I have here is my dad is a lawyer, and I'm not sure that that's what they call a male deer. Christian says a buck. Cynthia says a buck. Eileen, hey, Eileen, says a buck. Everyone, I want to shout out to Eileen Carigliano, who's doing an incredible job of leading her faculty and her kids at Staten Island Academy, along with the headmaster and all of the administration and team through what is a rather odd special time. Yes. Oh, oh there we go. A stag or a buck. Question four. A female deer is called a doe. What is a male deer called? a stag or a buck. And in case you're wondering, a male deer is a stag, 
a female deer is a doe, and a young deer is called a fawn, a kid, or a calf. There are about 60 species of deer. Just so you know, have some lemonade. Tomorrow I want all the parents to join me with their own special lemonade and all the kids to join me with whatever they want to drink. We also have to have some water and keep ourselves hydrated because right now is all about not being sick, right? So we want to wash our hands and we want to constantly drink water and stay as healthy as we possibly can. All right, question five. This is a special one. Question five. Question five requires your parents. So I'm going to give you a minute, if you are not with your parents, to ask them to join us. This is a question that only your parents can answer. What famous band released the song Tub Thumping in 1997? 20 seconds on the clock. What famous band released the song Tub Thumping in 1997? All right, chat it in uh, or not, oh, chat it in or write it down. What famous band released the song Tub Thumping in 1997? Do we have an answer? It was Chumbawamba! Chumba Wumba. Okay, kids, everyone who's watching, say the word Chumba Wumba. Chumba Wumba. Isn't that a funny word? That was my first concert. Can you believe that? I went to my first concert my sophomore year in college, and it was Chumba Wumba in Boston. And you know what this song sounds like? It sounds like this. I get knocked down, but I get up again. All right, that was Chumbawamba uh, with their song Tub Thumping, and you're never going to keep me down. Tootsie says work. Tootsie's my dance choreographer. I did not consult her for those moves, but maybe if we go forward with this show, she can come in and choreograph it. All right, so someone just said hi. I can't text you. I got people to talk to. So number six. Here we go. Number six is the adult question, right? Which means, oh, there's Chumbawamba. Number six is the adult question, which means that the kids can participate, but it's probably more appropriate for the adults or for some of the older kids. Here we go. Which of the following represents Q in the official military alphabet? Which of the following represents Q in the official military alphabet? So for example, A is alpha, B is bravo. Is Q quick? Is it Quebec? Or is it quarantini? What does the Q represent? You have 20 seconds. Anybody? Oh, Esther says Quebec. Is that correct? Not sure. Welcome, Jennifer DeLeonardo. All right, who else? Oh, Eileen says Quebec. Love it, love it. Who else we got? Jessica says Quebec. Hi, Joanne. Welcome to the show. All right, Ramona Snyder says Quebec. It is... Quebec. All right. Q stands for Quebec or Quebec, as many of us say, probably incorrectly. Uh, and that represents Q in the military alphabet. Now, uh, okay. Um, all right, great. Let's move on to the next question. I've lost my place in my script, so I'm going to find it. We are practicing imperfection. We are practicing rolling with it. All right. Aha. Great. 
The next question is body math. Huh? Julio, what does that mean? Uncle Julie, what do you mean? Body math. Question seven. All you need for this question is a body. Do you have one? You also need some basic math skills. Do we have those? Now, I know there are some parents today who feel after doing their child's work that maybe they don't have some basic math skills. That's okay. We're all going to get through this together. All right. Here's question number seven. I mean, it's not quarantining, obviously. Yes, Christian, totally on it. All right, let's do it. So, kids, what is the number of ears you have plus the number of feet you have, plus the number of pinky fingers you have, minus the number of noses. You got 20 seconds. Number of ears you have, plus the number of feet you have, plus the number of pinky fingers that you have, minus the number of noses. It's quick body math. Number of ears, plus number of feet, plus number of pinky fingers, minus the number of noses. You have three seconds left. Honor system, honor system. Christian says seven, Eileen says seven. What do we have here? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is you have five. Oh, you don't have five ears? <laughs> that's my mistake. You have two ears and two feet, that's four, and two pinky fingers, that's six, and then one nose, so you subtract. So you have two ears, this is totally wrong because I messed up the slide. You have two ears plus two feet, that's four, plus two pinky fingers, that's six, minus one nose, that's five. What up, John Gorga? Welcome to the show. The answer here is five. We are practicing imperfection. All right, question number eight. Question number eight. This is a younger kid question, okay? Tootsie, you're right. Too much lemonade today. Question eight is a younger kid question. If you're six or younger, say hi. This is for you. If you're an older brother or an older sister, you can help out your younger brother or your younger sister, right? We're all going to have to do a lot of helping during this special time. So let's help each other out. Here's the question. What is the name of the cowboy in the movie Toy Story? What is the name of the cowboy in the movie Toy Story? <laughs> All right. Is it? Is it Buzz? Is it Woody? Or is it Bo Peep? Is it Buzz, Woody, or Bo Peep. Joe Kalari, this is for you, buddy. Haven't laughed in a while. Here's to you. All right, Antonio DiPetro says that it's Woody, right? Um, Lin Lindy, I can read your comments. Yes, I can see it. Hi, Lindy, welcome. All right, uh, it's a very special time, Jordana. That is correct. All right, it is Woody. Is it Buzz or is it Bo Peep? The cowboy in the movie Toy Story is Woody. That's right. So if you got Woody, you get one point. All right, moving on to question nine. Question nine, everybody. This is fun. We should do this every Monday through Friday until the special time is over. All right, question nine. If something is, oh, let's advance it so you can see it. If something is flexible, what does that mean? Okay, remember, this is Uncle Julie's kids trivia show. So all the questions are really geared for kids. If something is flexible, what does that mean? Okay, does it mean you can bend it, you can eat it, or you can freeze it? What does that mean? You can bend it, you can eat it, or you can freeze it. Okay, I think there are 10 seconds left on the clock. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, 
If something is flexible, like straws, it means you can bend it. A, bend it. So if you answered A, bend it, you get a point. All right, now question 10 is our last question of the night, and then we're all going to go and have an exciting evening. So question 10 is our awesome woman question. Every night, question 10 will be an awesome woman. I was raised by an awesome woman, and I have two sisters who are awesome women. So let's take a look at awesome women. Question 10, who is this woman? You have 20 seconds. Who is this woman? Hey, Michelle, welcome. Hi, Devin. I see Michelle, I see Devin. All right, Christian Rouleau, good question, good answer. All right, 20 seconds are up. That woman is a woman named Harriet Tubman. In case you're wondering, Harriet Tubman, Joseph, Joseph knows this because Joseph taught me all about the Underground Railroad, right? My nephew Joseph learned this in school and made sure that he told me all the details as if I had never learned them. All right, in case you're wondering, Harriet Tubman was an American hero. She was born into slavery and escaped and then helped over 70 people find safe homes using a network of helpers called the Underground Railroad. If you're interested, you can learn more if you research her. All right, that's our trivia for today. I love you. Before I go, I want to share a special quote with you and then give you a riddle for the night. First, what is a quote? Kids, what's a quote? Anybody want to chat it at me? What is a quote? Susie only got one wrong. Well done, Susie. All right, a quote is something that someone else said that I'm saying to you. And here it is. The happiest people don't always have the best of everything, but they make the best of everything. The happiest people don't always have the best of everything, but they make the best of everything. And that's tonight's think about. I want you to think about this special time that we're all experiencing together. And let's use it as an opportunity to make the best out of everything around us. So kids, what is one thing in your life that is not how you want it to be today that you can make the best of? What does it mean to make the best out of something? Think about it. Maybe talk about it at dinner. Maybe think about it tonight when you go to bed, okay? Now, for our riddle before we go, here is our riddle for tomorrow. We'll answer it at the top of tomorrow's show. Here's our riddle. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? Do not answer right now in the comments. Think about it, and we'll answer it tomorrow at the top of the show. What can travel all around the world without leaving its corner? I will put that into the comments so you can look at it. That's the show tonight. Looks like it's a 30-minute show. We'll do this every Monday through Friday until this special time is through. Tomorrow, invite some friends to join us, and we'll all be home together. Parents, let me know if the time works. Should we keep it at 6? Should we go earlier? And any other feedback that you have. And kids, I want you to remember, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Let's make some lemonade, people. Love you.